Hi guys! Today's video is going to be a video all about my tattoos uh, and why I got them and what they mean. I have quite a bit of tattoos, not like a ton, but I have a significant amount and I figured it would be fun to do a video going through all of those and showing you guys them and talking about them. I'm really sorry that it's been a while since I've done a makeup video. There's a couple things just kind of like getting in the way of me doing that, but hopefully I will be back with doing one soon. If that's what you guys want to see, let me know in the comments. And if you guys just don't mind that I'm not doing makeup videos, let me know that as well and I'll keep not doing makeup videos, you know, because I'm cool with that too. I'm really enjoying coming up with other types of videos and I actually have a couple other ones planned, although one of them actually is a makeup video, but it's not like a makeup tutorial kind of video. It's just a makeup themed video. I'm going to start like through all my tattoos in order from like the first one I got to the last one I got, most recent one, and just describe them all and we'll look at them all and yes. The very first tattoo, oh, you know, I should have shut the windows. You're probably hearing all the cars going by and it's probably really, really annoying. So hold on. Okay, on to the tattoos. The very first tattoo that I got was on my wrist here. Is this. And I'll put in clips of like actual good views of everything. So it's this little heart and key, heart lock and key image. And it was just like flash on the wall at the tattoo shop. But I picked it out actually before the day that I went in. I was in the tattoo shop with my friend. She was getting something done. And I had already started to think that I might want to get one done. So I was just looking around on the walls, trying to get some like inspiration of maybe something I might want to get done, and I saw this little design, and I just was like, that is exactly what I want done. The heart lock and key really symbolizes just a lot of positive things for me, so that's why I wanted to get that there. But anyways, so I don't know, I just... I feel like there's a lot of positive imagery in like a heart lock and key and I know some people look at it as just like a romantic thing or like a love thing or like a friendship thing but to me I really see it as just a sign of so much positivity and hope and you know getting rid of negative and looking for positive and so that's why I got it um so that is my first tattoo the second tattoo I got is this uh, music note heart, music staff heart thing, and I really got that one on a whim. It was also flash. I went into the tattoo place, and it was more of like, I want a tattoo today, and I'm going to find something in these books that I will get. <laughs> so... It wasn't, unfortunately, the most thought out tattoo, but whatever. So I chose this design because I saw it and I pretty much, you know, like I said, it was an impulse and I was like, oh, okay, I like music. Like, I really do like music, like, a lot, but I was like, I like music, hearts, music, done. And I got it done. That's what happened. So, basically, like, I chose to get these two on my wrist because I was like, that's low pain area. It's kind of like a testing thing to see if I can handle it. That was my mindset. And then, after I did that, the next one I went to get is on the back of my neck. And... I got something a little bit bigger and in a little bit more of a pain area. You know, I was like working my way up. 
So I got a heart with the kanji symbol for kiss in it. And that one hurt a lot more. That's for sure. And then the worst thing happened, like, years later, where I had to get surgery on my neck. And the surgeon looks at me and he says, I am going to have to cut right through that. So unfortunately now there's like a really gnarly scar down the center of it. And it's a little rough, but I'm kind of thinking that like in the future a little bit, I'll get it like touched up and maybe kind of covered up in a way, like still keep it what it is, but also extend it, clean it up, and maybe kind of go with the scar and incorporate the scar into it a little bit. Because it is a heart and it's cut down the center. Like, I mean, I could use that scar to my advantage, so. The next one I got is this one that, you know, you can see most of the time. Anytime I'm wearing something low enough to show it. Uh... And, of course, it's my Hello Kitty tattoo. And this is the first thing that I ever got that I didn't just pick off the wall. I planned out beforehand. I was like, I want to get a... I want to get a tattoo of Hello Kitty. And I looked and found a really good picture of the face that I wanted. And I brought it in. And I said, I want it on my chest. And they did it. And I regretted every second of it. I mean, not really, because I love it. I love this tattoo so much. But the pain, the the pain is like you could not believe getting something on your chest. Like, no. No. It's excruciating. And I originally wanted to get, like, a whole chest piece and kind of, like, continue it with other, like, Sanrio characters and, like, make a whole thing out of it. But this hurts so much. I don't know if that's ever going to happen. Maybe it will one day. But at this point, I have no plans to continue it. Now that I had kind of, like, conquered all of these small ones and I had gone in, like, painful areas... I decided I was going to take the plunge and start getting like larger size pieces. I decided I wanted to go ahead, jump in and get something bigger. And I that's when I got this one here on my forearm. And this is the first one I ever got any color put into. And I had like, you know, the red done. And I also got my son's name on it because it was after my son was born. And it's also, it's got the, um, kind of like heart lacking key theme again. And actually when I was looking at the flash in the store, oh, it's, it's the cat. When I was looking in the flash of the store and had originally found this one way back in the beginning, I had seen this one and I said, if everything, if I find out that I can handle this kind of stuff and everything goes well and I'm getting more done one day, I'll get this done. And I did. So. I really love it. It's beautiful. It's got roses and like a really kind of more intricate lock with these like wings and thorns. And I, I just really, really like it. So. The next one I got was after my daughter was born. And my sister actually drew me a picture, like an anime style picture, to be her, my daughter. And I got that one, oh god, I got that one on this arm here, so that's this here. And it's got her name next to it, and it's really just the cutest thing ever. My sister does amazing artwork, so I'm really, really happy to have that, and... Yeah. The next one I have, I got when I went to Tampa, Florida area on vacation. I went on vacation for, I think it was my 23rd birthday. My best friends were living down there, and so I went down there and stayed with them. And we went to 
Parsons Inc. in the Tampa area and they do amazing color work there. Like, if you go in their shop, they have all these like trophies up for um, awards that their artists have gotten for color work. And so we got matching best friend tattoos. We both have these tattoos on our ankles and they are engine hearts. So you can see it's got the engine in the heart and the work is so nice. Like it's the nicest tattoo I have. That's for sure. The guy did an amazing job. It took so long though. It really was incredibly painful because he used like 23 different colors to make it. Like, whoo! And mind you, this is only the second tattoo I've ever gotten any color and like I'm not used to it. I'm used to somebody writing some lines on my body and then we move on. So this was an overwhelming experience. And basically the way we did it too is like, I sat and I got mine done and I think it took like four hours and then she sat immediately after and got hers done so that like it was the same artist doing it and then he would like look at the picture of mine while doing hers to really make sure that they would match perfectly and I mean he did amazing they are like a perfect match it's so beautiful it is so beautiful but it was it was rough I tell you probably between the one on my ankle and the one on my chest and one other thing that we're not gotten to yet <laughs> we're probably like the three hardest tattoo things I've done so far so then the last kind of tattoo kind of the last tattoo I've gotten and I mean it's kind of like several tattoos but it is technically one tattoo is the upper arm piece here which is not done and I'm like such a failure because I got the lines done like two years ago. Yeah, I got the lining done two years ago and I still have not gone back for my coloring, which I mean, it's partially like there was some points in times where I was just chicken. Which is ridiculous because I know I'm going to go get more tattoos, but I'll, I'll explain why in a second. So part was because I was chicken. And part is because I didn't have any money because we've been like buying a house and, you know, taking care of just like adult financial crap. So hopefully this is the year that I go get it colored because I'm getting a little tired. Like some of the things are just like really dumb outlines because they just need shading and stuff. And some things you can't really tell what they're supposed to be. But anyways, let me explain what it is. So my entire half sleeve here is uh, based, not based on, it's, it's from things from my favorite, favorite, favorite video game, Day on Rampa which is a Japanese video game that it was made for the PSP and then translated and made for the Vita for, you know, like the Americas and whatnot, places that needed English and, and languages like that. And it is like a murder mystery kind of story game and it is so twisted and insane and I absolutely love it my sister got me into it she got me starting like we were actually reading it on the internet because it hadn't been translated into a playable US game at the time that we started getting into it and I was getting my surgery on my neck and so I was pretty much stuck inside like bedridden and she was like hey you want to read this and it was so good and I and I became so obsessed and it just kept me so occupied and happy while I was dealing with this hell and I love the story like I love it it was just so twisted too that I love it because it's seriously like you should you should if you're into that kind of thing 
if you're into murder. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, like, if you're into, because I was never into anything like it, and I loved it. If you're into the Hunger Games, and you might like something darker, I think you would like it. Because I, because that's what I was into, and that's, I think, why I liked it. So... But yeah, now I've bought like all the games and everything and then I was like, I want to get a tattoo of it on my arm because it I absolutely love it. I'm obsessed. So let me let me describe all the stuff that's happening on here. Um I've got the I've got Mono Bear who's like the um villain of the story. I've got 11037 here, which is like supposed to be written in blood, but it will be a little more obvious once it's colored. Um, I've got Alter Ego, who is my favorite. Seriously, like, I probably sound so crazy to people who have no idea what I'm talking about, which is probably most of the people in the world. Um, and then these are kind of like the three main characters up here, and. Oh yeah, and then on the inside of the arm, <laughs> this is a hamburger being abducted by an alien, which is just kind of this like inside jokey kind of scene in the in the game. So I had to throw that in there. <sighs> so that's kind of like all for Omata Tooth. I have, like, to get this, I have a long list of, like, things that I want to get done to, like, it's just, it costs money. Why does everything have to cost money? But the next task is going to be to get this arm colored, because it's going to look so good once I get it colored. Yeah, so.